In this episode, I'll explain stops and how they apply to the exposure triangle. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama. It's the camera store that has everything for photographers. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner photographer or a professional, Adorama has what you need and you can check them out at adorama.com. Well, I've been explaining the exposure triangle in the last episode. I gave a high level overview of the aperture and shutter and the ISO, those three things that make up the exposure triangle and sort of how they work together. But before we go any further, we need to understand stops. What the heck is a stop? Well, let me explain it to you in this way. If we had a scale and we had a pound on this side and a pound on this side, that would be balanced. Well, if I added a pound over here, I'd need to add a pound on this side to balance that out. If I added a pound over here, etc. So we have this standard unit of measure, and that's for weight. Well, if we're talking about light, we measure light a little bit differently. If we're talking about shutter speeds, we talk about fractions of a second, an eight thousandth of a second or a half a second. If we're talking about aperture values, those uh, that thing in your lens that opens and closes, we're talking about things like f2.8 and f11. And so what we're trying to do is figure out, hey, if my shutter is open and letting in this much light and I need to balance that out for a correct exposure, what should my aperture value be or my ISO value? And they're all using different kinds of numbers. And so it's hard to say, well, if I go from F8 to F11, I need to go from a shutter speed of 8,000 to what? Doesn't make sense. So to make everything make sense, photographers invented this thing called stops. And it just means half as much and twice as much. And so if I have, this scale of light and it's balanced and I take half as much light off of this side, well, I need to put twice as much on this side to balance that out. So I take a stop from this side and I put a stop on this side. Stop just means half as much or twice as much. Now I know everything's going ah in your brain and it's not working out. So to really make this make sense, I've got an animation and I'm going to explain all of this to you. All right, we need to make sense out of all this mumbo jumbo. Remember, a stop just means twice as much light or half as much light. And so to make this crystal clear, let's bring back our animation, our exposure triangle. We have our shutter, our aperture, and our ISO. Remember, our shutter has different shutter speeds that let in more and less light, depending on the speed. We have our aperture value that lets in more or less light, depending on the opening or the aperture value. And we have our ISO that gives us a sensitivity. So essentially more or less light depending on our ISO value. Now for the sake of argument, let's say that we have a nice sunny day and we have our camera set to F16 and our shutter speed is 125 and our ISO is at 100. And we have a proper exposure at those settings. Well, for some reason, we don't want to shoot at F16 because of depth of field, let's say. And so we want to shoot at 2.8. So let's see how stops affect this. So if I take my aperture and I change it to f11, now I'm one stop letting in one stop more light and things are out of balance. I'll be overexposed and so I need to change my shutter speed to 250. That's one stop and now things are in balance again. I'll go to f8. Now things are out of balance. To balance that out, I'll go to a shutter speed of 500. So every time I move the aperture by one stop, let's go to 5.6. I need to move my shutter by one stop. So we'll go back to 1000. F4 to 2000 on my shutter. Finally, F2.8, I'm now at 4000. So every time one thing moves by one stop, something else has to move by a stop up or down to keep our exposure set perfectly. Now let's just say for some reason, maybe the clouds come out and uh, my shutter speed now has to fall. So the clouds come out and it blocks the light. We have two stops less light. So now our shutter wouldn't be 4,000, it would be 2,000, that's one stop, 1,000, that's two stops. Because the light changed, our shutter speed has to change. Well, what happens if we want our shutter speed to be at 4,000? We can't open our aperture any wider, 2.8, let's say on this lens is as wide as it goes. Well, how do we do? Well, we have our ISO. So we'll go from an ISO of 100 to 200, that's one stop, that lets us change our shutter by one stop. So now we're at 2,000. We'll let in, we'll be more sensitive to light. We'll go to from an ISO of 200 to 400. That's one stop. That means our shutter can then go one stop to 4,000. So you get the idea. With stops, we can figure out exactly what's happening. If we move our aperture by a stop and things are balanced, we have to either move our shutter by a stop to keep things balanced, 
or move our ISO by a stop. So once you change one thing in the exposure triangle, you have to choose one of the other corners and change that to keep things balanced. And it's really nice because it helps us do calculations really fast. And most cameras on the dials, each click is usually one third of a stop or one half of stop. So if you have a, a click that says two clicks on the aperture ring, well, that's just two clicks on the shutter ring to balance things out. And you'll see that when you're using specifically on a Canon or a Nikon or a Panasonic on the dials in the front. If you click the uh, shutter button twice, you'll need to click the aperture dial twice to keep things in balance. And the more you use that, you'll get to know those clicks and you go, ah, that's it. The clicks equal a third of a stop. And if you uh, have a camera, you can actually go in on most cameras and change that to make those clicks make either a third stop, a half stop, or a full stop. It's up to you. I recommend keeping it at uh, a third stop increments. When we get to shooting in manual mode at the very end of the exposure triangle series, you'll see how those little clicks are really going to come in handy. But that's all there is to stops. Just remember, a stop means half as much or twice as much. So if we move one thing by a stop, we have to move another by a stop to keep everything balanced. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget, you can learn all about stops and understand the exposure triangle and advanced stuff and flash photography, all of that, all at the Adorama Learning Center. The Adorama Learning Center has tons of resources all about the exposure triangle and stops and advanced metering and all kinds of things, so check that out. And don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. That way you get all of the content absolutely free every single time. Well, thanks again for joining me, and I will see you next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.